the peppa, the papier, the papillon. Look at my holiday shirt. Oh, hi, Santa. Oh, hi, Mark. Oh, hi, Mark. All of my um, Christmas sweaters are missing. I assume that they are all in storage still. We gotta get them before the holidays. Hey, Jeffy? Yep. Welcome back to Foster the Meeple, a channel all about board games and Christmas. Exactly. Like I said, all of my holiday sweaters are in storage. I'm feeling very disappointed that I'm not currently wearing my Mickey Christmas sweater or my Baby Yoda Christmas sweater. And I have to That's turn in off storage? I have to turn off the heater. I don't know, I can't find it anywhere. Have you seen them? Nope. Don't get a yard while you're off camera. Good, don't get oh. off on camera. Mm. We are here today to do a little video called the 12 Games of Christmas in which we talk about 12 different categories of games that we are recommending for your holiday season. Now, none of these are Christmas games. None yeah, of no, no, no. Or That's, any kind of holiday game. These aren't meant to be Christmas games. No, it's just, you know what? Some people, we got vacation. Yeah. Well, we don't. But some people get vacation over the holidays. 12 Games of Christmas, different theme for each game. Game type. Exactly. 12 days of 12 Christmas. 12 games. So you can of play these over 12 days for a variety of different situations. Are we all on the same page? Yep. Thank goodness. Except for that one person that says, None of these games are Christmas games. Because they didn't Guaranteed. watch the intro. Let's start off with number 12. Now, what typically happens during the holiday season? Fights. Fighting. You fight with your family, you fight with your friends, you fight with your significant other because the holidays are stressful. You fight with yourself. You fight with yourself. Internal struggles. We've all been there. So we are recommending a game that is going to help you get some of that out in game form. So you don't need to take it out on your loved ones or on yourself. And that is the Dragon Prince Battle Charge mm. from Brotherwise Games. Exactly. What you're doing in Dragon Prince Battle Charge is playing as one of the Dragon Prince characters. Is it a graphic novel? TV it is show, an anime both? show. I don't know if it's a graphic novel, but it's definitely a TV show. We've ne never seen the IP. No. We've never seen the, the OG story. No, which however, means that you don't need to. However, we have played the game. It yes. is a deck-based arena battler. Mm -hmm. You are going to be playing as kind of asymmetrical players mm -hmm. from Dragon Prince. You're going to be moving around the arena and trying to reduce the other player down to zero hit points. Yes. There's some unique abilities. The miniatures are beautiful and it's super fighty. It says ages 10 and up, so you can play it with many people in your yeah, maybe, family. Yeah, maybe you're fighting with your kids and maybe. you're like, all right. Let's settle this let's on settle the Let's settle this on the Battle Charge Arena board. Exactly. Boom. Merry Christmas. Now, let's move into happier times, okay? We fought. We fought, but then what do people do after they fight? Party. Okay? True. It's true. So yep. during the holiday season, everybody's having a party. Your family's having a party. Your friends are having a party. You have to go to a work party where they force you to wear cocktail dresses and friggin' suits. So what do you want to do at a party? What do you want to do? You want to play games. So the game that I we do. are recommending for your holiday party this year is going to be Monikers from CMYK. I got the letters in the wow. right corner. Wow, well love, done. Love it. Monikers or Time's Up is a game that is amazing for a party. It goes through three rounds. The first one, everybody is grabbing a bunch of prompts from the deck and they are throwing them into the pile. In the first round, you have to say whatever you want to say to get people to guess what's on the card. Mm -hmm. Round one. Round two, you have to use one word to try and get them to guess the prompt on the card. Round three, you're doing charades and you're playing this in teams. So two teams, you're going to have one team and the second team, which is also how two teams generally works. Usually that's how it works, yep. This is a game to play to really just like loosen people up, though I will say that people need to be prepared to get loose with it, okay? Mm -hmm. Because if you're like too shy and you don't want to do the charades because, oh, it's so embarrassing, it's not going to work with this game. Mm -hmm. I care. feel like we have never laughed as much as we have playing this game. Agreed. We have created so many like inside jokes and like good memories playing with our friends what over was at the, Table uh, Nuts. It was Morgan Freeman. Morgan Freeman as someone though. It was, we had two prompts. One was Morgan Freeman and the second was Morgan Freeman as the president. Right. It is a fantastic party game, probably one of my personal favorites and there's a billion different expansions you can get. Mm. So that is monikers for your party. It's the holidays. 
and there are little ones just ripping around all over the place. They're People jammed, bring their kids hands. to the holidays, okay? Yeah. It's holiday season. Kids are there. You got to keep the kids entertained because why? Mommy and daddy need a little wine, mm -hmm. probably. Do you know what a great holiday game is for the kids? Pull it out, Jeff. Rhino Hero from Haba. Now, this is the super battle version, which yeah. is like... The more grandiose version you're not of just Rhino building Hero. Up, you're building out and up. So you're building out and up. Rhino Hero, much smaller box. You are basically taking cards and building up a tower. Yes. And if you knock that tower over by putting the little Rhino Meeple on each level, you lose. Yeah. Simple. Very simple. That's very fun. Game. Also, another game that I don't know I've laughed as much playing. Uh, it's as... very stressful. You can play this from ages five to 99. Yes. If as, you are 100, don't even try. As it says on the box. It'll be too much for you. Now, sometimes during the holidays, I don't know about you guys, but I need a little me time. Okay? It's just too much. There's too many Preach. people. It's people everywhere. I've had enough of it. I really need to get away from Jamie most, most <clears throat> days. Exactly. So when you need a little me time, it's time to play a solo game. And the solo game that I am going to recommend is from Button Shy, and it is called Food Chain Island. I freaking... Love this Jamie's game. Jamie's always playing this game. This is the one like solo game. I've got quite a few that I reach for, but this is by far the one that I reach for the most. Definitely. It's very simple. You are making a grid of little animals. Each animal has a number and it's the food chain. So every animal eats another animal. If you have an animal that is a number six, it can eat three up to three values below it. So five, four, three. And you're moving everything one and then each animal has a special ability that triggers. The animal moves, it eats, its special ability triggers and you keep going until you can't go anymore. This is a game to get somebody if number one, they are getting into solo games. If they travel a lot, this is great. I played this on a seat at the airport while we were traveling because I wanted to play it so bad. I'm going to my room and I'm going to play Food Chain Island. Exactly. Leave is, me alone. I love this game. Sometimes you can't be alone. Sometimes you got to be with the whole family, okay? And so for that, we're going to recommend a co-op game that you could play with your family. Paint the Roses from yes. North Star Game Studios. Paint the Roses is... Uh, cooperative deduction game. Yes. Alice in Wonderland themed. Ultimately, you are trying to not get caught by the Queen of Hearts. She's trying to chop off your head. If she catches you, she's going to chop off your head. No, you did. There's a bunch of different modules in this game, but mm -hmm. ultimately, each one has some sort of semblance of similarity where you are placing out little chits not chits but like, like tokens tokens or, yeah they're really chunky plastic pieces mm -hmm. onto a board you have to basically give clues to everyone around the board about a specific a specific like or order of symbols yeah. colors and maybe a combination of the two mm -hmm. and if you get that right you are able to move your player piece around the board if you get it wrong the queen is going to catch up, to you, up to you and she's going to cut your head Chop. off. But there's a lot of game in here. Yeah. It's very, very, very fun, very difficult puzzler. Now, sometimes you don't have a big family. Maybe you're away. Maybe you just don't. Maybe it's just the two of us, mm -hmm. me and Jeff, because we're one, two. We need a two player game. So for the two player game, we are going to su suggest, I can't say suggest, Radlands from Roxley. Now I know what you're thinking. Hey, that's not what your regular copy of Radlands looks like. That looks like it's really sh shiny wrap. That's because we're gonna be giving this copy away to you. Fun fact though, I might've taken a little bit of the shrink off. He started opening, I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, I don't know. Yeah, I went in <laughs> autopilot, I think. Yeah. There, it's not much though. We see shrink wrap and we just tear. So yeah. Radlands is a two player game. It is a head to head lane battler where you are trying to destroy your opponent's bases. They have three bases. You're trying to destroy them. You're doing that by playing out punk cards as well as like different people who have different abilities and then you are fighting within that lane. The primary resource in this game is water. It's kind of like a very futuristic, like everything is neon. It's like yeah. punk. It's like post-apocalyptic, like if you've ever played Borderlands, a video game, something like that. Mm -hmm. This is one of our favorite two-player games. It is 
nice and small so you could take it wherever you need to go and we wanted to share the love with you guys a little bit for the holidays and give a copy of this away if you want to enter to win the first thing that you need to do number one is you have to be subscribed to the channel of course like this video we'll never know but it's always fun if you just do and then you're gonna have to write something in the comments and I would like to know what is the game that you play the most during the holidays with your family that's what I, like I want to know. I bet you there's going to be a lot of crib. Yeah, I think so. Definitely. So let us know that and then we will do a draw sometime before the end of the month and we will get you the game as soon as we are able to. Sometimes it's not just the two of you and sometimes you want to play a big game with all your friends and your whoever and you need a game that can play with over five players. And so for that game, we are going to be introducing you to, maybe not introducing you, but we are going to be suggesting Parade, and this is from Z-Man Games. This is another Alice in Wonderland themed game, and you can play with up to six players. This is a card game where you are making a parade, hence the name, of Alice in Wonderland characters. However, Jeff, explain the rest of the game. <laughs> Because it still is, con I can play it, but it's just confusing. You are ultimately trying to have as little points in your hand at the end of the round as you can. Yeah. So ultimately there is a parade of characters and each character has a number associated with it. On your turn, you have to play your card at the end of the parade. And depending on the color or the value of the card that you've played in the sequential order, you will have to then take cards out of the parade to your player piles. Yes. And again, you want to have as little numbers as you, or little value as you yeah. can. You want to have the fewest number. However, if you have the most of one color in comparison to everyone else, then that pile will score zero points. Yeah, so like there's shooting also for the moon, yeah. a little bit of a mean element because I might see, oh, Jack's going for blue. So I'm also going to go for blue to screw him over to make sure he has lots of points at the end. Mm -hmm. It is so much fun. We've played it at six and we've played it at four. Mm -hmm. We haven't played it at two, but we know that it works well as a big game. And I actually think I am going to pack this one for PAX Unplugged because I would like yeah, to play it again. Talking about bringing a lot of games. Woo! Now, a lot of you people... You start everyone with now. Yeah. Every time. Because now, this is what we're talking about. We're, we've moved on from the last category. We're in this category now. Now, it's 2022. I don't want a game that's like two years old. I want something that's shiny and new and cool. I want what all the cool kids are getting. And so for that game, for a 2022 release, we are recommending 3,000 Scoundrels. In 3,000 Scoundrels, you are thematically trying to steal future tech mm. from safes around this city. So ultimately what has happened in this game is futuristic individuals come from the future and left a bunch of tech around and then disappear Classic. and you're trying to go around to all these safes and steal this tech you're doing that by playing out scoundrels and bluffing your way into different regions of the city and different lockers that might have tech for you to steal and mm -hmm. score victory points yes but the main component of this is bluffing with kind of like these poker cards between you and the other players around the board. And you are building out those scoundrels as the game goes on. So that's why it's called 3,000 Scoundrels because there are 3,000 different combination possibilities. So the variability out of this mm -hmm. world. But you know what, Jeff? Well, you didn't say no. Now, you know what? Not everybody wants the shiny new thing. Oh, blech, too new. Give me something old. Give me a classic. I want to play something old and good, mm -hmm. also known as an oldie but a goodie. So for this one, we are gonna be recommending a game that unfortunately we do not own, but I, I would love to own. Maybe we should look at getting it. Yeah. And that game is called La Boca. Mm -hmm. We played this with our friends Rodney and Christy when we went to go visit. It's kind of like Tetris in real life. 3D. 3D. Basically you're playing head to head with someone. The I'm on this side of the cross. table, yeah. somebody else is on the other side, and we have these wooden building blocks. There's going to be a card that is played in between the two of us. I see one configuration of the blocks. The person on the other side sees another configuration. But as those go together, when I look at my side, I should be able to see the exact image that I see and they should be able to see the exact image that they see. So you have to work together as fast as you can to build up the image while also working together to make sure that both sides are as they need to be. Mm -hmm. This game is so fun. It's a little bit stressful. It's a little bit brain burning. And you never hear people talking about it. I think it's from 2017, I want to say. It was either 2000. 
2013 or 2017. I just think that it's super fun. You can play this with so many people. I just want to throw out that Rodney and I got one in like 10 seconds. Yeah, whatever. Now, you know what? You didn't bring that one in. It's too heavy. <laughs> the holidays, it's just, it's real life, you mm -hmm. know? It's a lot. It can be a lot. So sometimes you just want to escape reality. You're like, ugh, I need a break. Get me into a game where I, I can just forget about all this nonsense. been working day and night, night and day, all year. And now I just day need to night. step out of it. And so the game we are going to recommend to escape reality is a little game called Return to Dark Tower from Restoration Games. Little Jeffrey. game. Return Travel to Slides. Dark Tower is a cooperative, app-driven narrative story where you are completing a bunch of different scenarios. Mm -hmm. It has this beautiful, big tower in the middle that's going to spit out bad things at you skulls there's lights on it it's super it immersive noise. the app adds the story to it it's super in depth and it really draws you into the story and ultimately you'll have a bunch of goals that you need to complete so you're playing as these characters that have somewhat asymmetrical abilities you'll be ripping around this tower trying to get to objectives to you know, maybe cleanse dead from an area or the one we played, there was a bunch of wolves ripped around. We had to kill mm -hmm. all the packs of wolves. Why we think this game is so immersive is because we played it at like 11 p.m., 10 p.m. We started to play this game. Mm -hmm. It's it, like a three hour it's game. A, it <laughs> felt like 30 minutes and it actually took us three hours. Yeah, It's so much fun. If you like cooperative, I guess, kind of like big box campaign-ish games, scenario-based mm -hmm. games, Definitely one to check into, but yeah. definitely one we lost ourselves in. This is one that could be defined as big box, bigger heart. It's super extra. Mm -hmm. Now, sometimes maybe you're like, I can't get out of the work mode because I'm going to have to go back in like a week. I need to keep my brain active. Mm -hmm. I need to keep it going. Mm -hmm. So I want to work on like a something really brain burning. Mm -hmm. And so for that game, mm -hmm. we are going to be recommending Anno 1800. Then this is from Cosmos. This game quite literally broke my brain. <laughs> and it broke it again. And <laughs> it just broke it again because I was just thinking about how to explain it. Just so you know, like something I like about Cosmos is on the back of their games, they put how much luck is involved, how much strategy. It's a 5 out of 5 on strategy and a 1 out of 5 on luck. So you know that it's going to burn your brain. <laughs> Burn your brain. I'm just letting you go. This is kind of like an industry engine building game where mm -hmm. you are gathering different resources to put on your player board. But in order to gather those resources, you have to pay resources. And then they're also going to produce more resources. Mm -hmm. And then as the game progresses, there's more and more resources that cost more and more resources. So you need to work on your engine to make sure that you're producing the right things. You can also use your opponent's board and take some of their resources. Mm -hmm. So you got to make sure that you're producing the right things because maybe you need this resource to build the resource that's coming down the road because you have goals that make you. And then there's also, <laughs> I just can't, like it literally breaks my brain. It is it's basically good. like a supply chain game. So yeah. you will start with basic resources and you're trying to build up those resources to unlock the ability to build even better resources, mm -hmm. ultimately build even better products. Then it just cascades up and up and up and up and up and you're just building out your industry. All of these things being said, this game is very good. It's very good, yeah. It's combo -rific. Yeah. One category left. And this is something that is just for fun. Who needs to burn their brain? It's too much. I just want a game of pure luck. And for that, we have picked Strike. I know you could probably argue like, I have a strategy for Strike. Do you? Is what your strategy, strategy rolling? Be? I beg your pardon? The box just opened on its own and I'm freaking out. There's no actual strategy. No, you're like, I like to roll my dice on top of other dice and I like to do this. And the box keeps opening all on its own. This is an arena battler. You have, I'm just going to open it up and show you. That's the game. And you are going to take however many dice you get depending on the game and you are rolling them. And any Ooh, of Ooh, that's ones, a good roll. Thank you. What you're trying to do is you're trying to get sets of dice that match, right? So here I rolled a bunch of threes and some twos. So I get to keep these. If you roll an X, it's gone. So you, you lose a dice, dice if it doesn't match. So now, ooh, 
Ooh. Whoa. Now, now Jamie's they can't down. See it. Now I'm down to three, three dice. dice. And then I might be like, you know what? I'm good. Yep. I'll stop. And then the next person goes, what you are trying to do is be the last one standing with dice. dice. That's all luck. It's just dice rolling in a bowl. You know what? It's very fun. It's very fun. So that is a game that is just pure luck. If you want to just have some silly fun, play Strike. <sighs> yeah. You did it. You put the cover back on, dingus. Did I? Yes. I you, need so. even, you didn't even put the dice back in the bag. <laughs> I don't think that Keep sounds going. like me. Keep going. And those are 12 games of Christmas that have nothing to do with Christmas, but have a little bit to do with Christmas and holidays. <laughs> those are some game recommendations from us to play during the holiday season. Once again, don't forget to enter into the Radlands giveaway if you are interested in winning a copy of a very, very fun, fun game. Mm -hmm. Okay? It's very, very fun. If you're interested in buying any of these games, you should first start by checking your friendly local gaming store. And for us, that is... The Boardroom Game Cafe. Yes, it is. That's all we have. Thank you so much for watching. If you like what you see... Please subscribe. We hope to see you again soon. And now we say Ladies. goodbye. Goodbye! Ugh. Jeff's over me today. Yes, I am. Why? Because you're just in one of them... What? Say it. Out loud. You're in one of those Say moods, it. man. Vampire. Jeff, have you even seen Twilight? You have? Then why didn't you finish the quote? You guys want to help in our parade. Parade. Yeah, well, wow. Well. <laughs> I don't want to be in a parade. I want to play parade. The game. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Foster the Meat Bullet. Why didn't you stop? What? Why'd you stop? Why didn't you pay attention? Ugh. What? And then I have to restart everything just because I went like this. Yeah, we'll pay attention and then we won't have to restart it. No one cares. I care. They know I'm here. I care. I have to freaking cut my hair. Me too. Even though I'm balding because Kate said, told you, I'm balding. Bad. You can't tell. Look. I'm thinning. I'm thinning up top you're real thinning, fast. But you're not balding. Real you're fast. Thinning. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I just want to get it ready. Okay. Well, why would you put it on the bar? I didn't. You did! You, you literally were the one that grabbed the games and put them on the table. It wasn't me. Oh my goodness gracious, It Jamie. wasn't me. You have an inability to accept any responsibility. It wasn't me. Do you know how hard it was for me not to sing It Wasn't Me by Shaggy just then? Mm -hmm. Very hard. There we go. Brooks spurt. Fox spurt. And those are... I'm so sick of this right now. We've been filming all You're day. You're driving me nuts. You're driving me nuts.